Oh shit. Atlas mouth cash a check that his ass can't afford. The motherfucker should have kept his mouth shut. Anyway, Hines and Adler, they go test the barrier. It's a good fucking barrier. <laughs> they couldn't move. They kept walking in circles. Every time they tried to leave, they walked in the circles. They kept like strings or, or line or marking trees. You know, all that type of shit. Leaving breadcrumbs so they won't get lost. They couldn't leave the fucking barrier. Once you get in there, you're trapped. It's like you're in a fucking nightmare. Like nothing but like Nightmare on Elm Street or something. You can't leave. That fucking hallway keeps getting longer and longer. And the only way you can go is towards that boiler room. Anyway, um... They get back and the, the crew just start checking for frauds. They have everybody go up there and state their name, the story, the shit, all that other bullshit. Which, um, really didn't do much help until they got to Flemmy. Turns out her fucking parent was a sicko. Fucking raped the human, which is a pop. Raped the motherfucker. Got the damn fiend pregnant and had this broad. She got one red eye with a damn beating heart or something, and it looks like like a blood clot or something. I don't know, some weird shit in, in her eye. And she has a horn, a semi-horn. She got all that shit on her head to keep that hidden. They said what happened was she was raised by fiends. She thought she was just a pure fiend, even though she looked like a human. And that... uh they had built a shrine to the to the gunpowder god, which is weird. They got a gunpowder god. Whatever. Anyway, they built that and had the girl training in there or whatever, and that's how she became the saint of uh, gunpowder. And now she seems ridiculously suspicious. But the dude cleared her. He says, we do know that she killed a few saints. And we do know that they don't want the saints to meet. And from her story, she also tells us that she was supposed to kill the saints. Because she was raised by the fiends to do that. Like the, um, the fiends were creating their own brave six in order to take on the braves. So that way the, 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 the demon god can be reawakened without too much of a hassle. And she, he said, well, if, he, if she didn't want us to meet up here, she could have killed Adlet at any given moment. He said she, he walked, then they, he revealed the story that he was walking in front of her. He was trying to clear, clear this broad's name. I was thinking to myself, damn, he want the pussy that bad? The bitch, you find out the bitch got a horn, her eyeballs all jacked up, one's completely red, she's half thin. You don't even know what's down there. It might not be human. He thinks all of us human except for that horn in that eye. You don't know. The other stuff covered up. When you take when she take her, her pants off, it might be like frog legs or some bullshit like that. You don't know what that is. So I would be weary about that. But he's fighting that hard over some pussy. He even said to himself that they could start suspecting him. And he's fighting that hard. Yeah, he deserves to get killed. <laughs> the dumb motherfucker. If it would have if it would have been me, I would have sat my ass in that corner and stayed quiet. Like when stuff like that happen, I go creep off in the corner and try to stay out, try to stay out of that zone like this, and hope nobody see me, you know. And if they do, then I got to I got to defend myself. Anyway, um, he had, he went ahead and cleared her name, somewhat, you know. He, he she she what she says checks out so far. That's what I'm saying. What she says checks out. Uh, so then. The guy who supposedly, uh, what's his name, Hines, he's an assassin. That was kind of shady. But then he said something that made sense. He said the Braves supposed to take down the demon guy. Fuck what the occupation is. And he's right. It's, it's worse to have the fucking demon guy out there. Then he also, he's very smart. We, he, looks, he, do, he looks ridiculous. But once you hear this guy talk, then you know he's, he's very cunning. Which is also... To his, to my dismay, because I'd be scared. Like, whoa, if he could think that good, maybe he's the one tricking us. You know that type of deal. Anyway, he explained how she could still activate the barrier, 
but she probably did because she probably isn't the, the thing that's there to kill him or whatever. He said, because she could have activated the barrier because she's inside them. She made it in the temple. The temple doesn't let fiends in. So basically, she's a fucking day walker. She got, she has, um, she's, she's half a uh, human, half fiend, and she has all this strength, none of their weaknesses except for the thirst. She's Blade. Anyway, after that, it turned on Adlet. He says, you're the one who opened this, the door. He said, I know all about them doors, goddammit. He said, either when they open, they stay open, or they don't ever open. He says, some won't open, or when they open up and you get in there, they close on you. He said, that one's still open. He says, so, once it stays open, once it opens, it's not going to close again. Uh, it's not going to close again. So that means that whoever was in there, how did they get in? Like, if they would have opened the door, the door wouldn't close back, right? So he's wondering, how the fuck did, he, you know, um, Adler get in there? So we do know Adler got in through blowing up the door. Then they said the barrier was activated at that time. You know what I'm saying? So who else did it? You said that the, the barrier activated when you went in there, when you opened the door. Now, here's the other thing. That broad in there, the one Mira, whatever her name is, the one with the blue dress, she's got the fucking key. I would have brought that up. I'd be like, hold on, that bitch over there got the key. And I'd have turned this on him. Like the dude that's accusing me, I'd have flipped it on him. I'd be like, oh, how do we know that you're not it? You're an assassin? We don't know. You might play Assassin's Creed. Um, you talked about, you just bragged about how you can sneak into places and how crafty you are. How do I know you didn't sneak in here? Went out back. Why? When I came in, you ran out back. Then came in and act like you didn't do it. How do I know that? You know, I, I would have brought all that shit up on him. I'm like, you bragged about doing all that shit. You know, so how do we know that you didn't do it? And just, I would have I tried to play it on him as much as I can. Try to keep from getting killed. This episode, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. It was real suspenseful. I like seeing the interaction, finding out more about Hines, how smart he is, how cunning he is. Um, they say that the seventh, there must be a seventh brave. Yeah, but who's to say that the seventh brave is not, it could not, the seventh brave might not be one of the evil people. You know what I'm saying? It, it, could, it could be an eighth person out there who's not a brave that did that. We know that Adler didn't do it because we watch, but they don't know. But I was like, Hines, you talked about sneaking in and out of places. How the fuck we know you ain't sneaking here? You know, that type of deal. I would have turned it on him. Um, I would have figured something out. But I would have I would've, I would've played it. But yeah, it was a good episode. Suspenseful. That's basically what it was. I just liked seeing the interaction between the people. It was almost like that movie Phone Booth when the dude was stuck in the phone booth. The whole fucking movie took place in the phone booth. But they kept it interesting with the dialogue. But anyway, go ahead and your comments. Like the video and subscribe. Cause I can't eat. I'm broke, nigga. I'm broke. And you got the power to change that. Peace.